Now at 6, Hunter Biden is charged with federal tax and weapons offenses, but will he serve jail time? What the DOJ is recommending. Plus, a closer look at gun safety after a five-year-old was accidentally shot and killed by another child in McKee last night. And more affordable housing in Lexington will take you to a ribbon-cutting ceremony today for the Alcove at Russell. I'm Chief Meteorologist T.J. Shuck. Lots of muggy air out there on this final day of spring. A lot of the area dry. Uh, much of the activity confined to southern Kentucky. Got some heavy rain, a lot of lightning running uh, through Barberville down toward Williamsburg. Your Storm Team forecast is coming up. You're watching ABC 36 on your side. News at 6. Good evening, I'm Erica Bivens. And I'm Paxton Boyd. Thanks for joining us. A five-year-old accidentally shot and killed by another child last night in McKee is another reminder about the importance of gun safety. Kentucky State Police says it happened at a home in Jackson County after a seven-year-old shot a five-year-old. ABC 36's Anna Medina spoke with an armory on gun safety tips as well as the different types of locks for firearms. She joins us with tonight's top story at six. Impact Armory and Service here in Lexington mainly specializes in firearm repair services. And it's not in any way a retail store. It's basically like a mechanic, but for your firearms. Stephen Young, the owner, says those who own one need to be well educated to make sure they don't land in the wrong hands. If you're carrying a firearm, carry it. If you're not carrying it, secure it somewhere. As gun safety continues to be a trending topic, Stephen Young, the owner of Impact Armory and Service, says it's important to understand how firearms work. We want to make sure customers get the most out of their investments in firearms. So by, by partnering up with our customers to make sure that they are they're doing the right things to take care of them, they're, they're properly educated to do so. Different firearms require different locks. And before you lock it away, there are a few steps to take. For safety purposes, what you always want to do is make sure before you do anything with a firearm is remove the magazine from the firearm. So if the magazine was actually in the firearm, you'd hit the magazine release, remove the magazine out of it. Next step would be to clear it and make sure it's absolutely clear. In this case, we're looking to get inside the chamber here, make sure there's no ammunition in there. Also check through the well on the bottom to make sure that nothing has fallen in that place. And once we know that it's clear, we can either use an ad hoc chamber indicator or, you know, round indicator, something to mark that we're getting completely through the barrel and it's not obstructed. Young says one of the most popular locks is the cable lock. And you'd simply run that down through the chamber all the way to the bottom of the magazine well, and then you would lock it in place, and that firearm is locked up. You can't do anything with it. Uh, you would literally have to go through the efforts of cutting the cable to do so. This is one that goes through and fits completely through the cavity so that it blocks the ability for what it does is you basically put that on, lock it in place, remove the key, give it a good squeeze, and now it's very much locked in place. Also stressing that the lock is only there to slow someone down. And they're not going to guarantee that they, they can't be breached in some way, shape, or form, but you truly have to want it really bad if you're going to go through that process of damaging your firearm. Another important tip Young says to also lock up your ammunition separately from your gun and do not store your firearm under a bed mattress or an unlocked drawer. He also says that they also give away free locks for anyone who may need one. For now, Anna Medina, ABC 36 on your side. All right, let's get another check on that forecast. Now with our chief meteorologist, T.G. Shuck. Summer may be officially just a day away, but that mugginess already here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just kind of slowly easing into it. Sunday, it felt a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, a little more. And today, it is firmly in it's place. It's there, yeah. Yeah, we got the moisture around. And uh, not everyone has seen rain today. It's been relatively dry along and north of the I-64 corridor. But this afternoon, with that low to the south, that has helped fuel uh, some uh, shower and thunderstorm activity. This stuff, just some solid rain. Richmond uh, running down to the south along I-75 uh, and coming up uh, through Bryantsville there in northern Garrett County. But the area of concern, man, look at this. Just east uh, of London running down now west of Barberville. A lot of lightning with this coming up on Interstate uh, 75. So Corbin, you're going to see the brunt of this because it's going the opposite direction. Normally it's west to east. This is east to west. Williamsburg in on it. Torrential downpours. And again, 
a lot of lightning, so uh, you'll definitely want to be careful down there. This is on the north side of the center of circulation, which is across East Tennessee. Now here in Lexington, looks a little ominous looking off to the south. Our Bluegrass, Pace Care, Skyview HD Camera Network, Hicks and Funson Cam. We got that northeast wind at about 15 to 20. We're at 81. We overachieved here in Lexington because of the lack of rain and a few breaks in the clouds down south, mid to upper 70s. Our dew points are high, thus the muggy feel to the air. So as we go through this evening, again, primarily south of Lexington, that's where the lion's share of the activity will be. Once we get past sunset, it will be more widely scattered overnight. A summer-like overnight to come, upper 60s, muggy, and we'll do it all again as we welcome summer tomorrow. More on that in your seven-day coming up. Kentucky State Police is investigating an officer-involved shooting in Boyd County. Troopers say that shooting happened Sunday night just before 8.30 in Ashland. No other information has been released by KSP at this time. An investigation into the incident continues. ABC 36 has reached out for specifics. We'll, of course, keep you updated on new developments. President Biden's son Hunter will plead guilty to two tax misdemeanors and reached a deal with federal prosecutors on a felony gun possession charge. According to a court filing from the Department of Justice, the DOJ is expected to recommend probation for the tax misdemeanors. The gun charge will likely be diverted, meaning it'll be dismissed if Hunter Biden abides by certain conditions for a period of time. Final sentencing decisions will, of course, be up to the judge. The White House saying in a statement the Bidens love their son and support him. According to Hunter Biden's attorney, the deal with prosecutors will resolve the long-running federal criminal probe into the president's son. The attorney also saying Hunter Biden thinks it's, quote, important to take responsibility for these mistakes he made during a period of turmoil and addiction. Kentucky State Representative James Comer taking to social media saying, quote, Hunter Biden is getting away with a slap on the wrist when growing evidence uncovered by the House Oversight Committee reveals the Bidens engaged in a pattern of corruption, influence peddling, and possibly bribery. The ACLU of Kentucky and other organizations have filed motions to dismiss their case challenging two abortion bans after the overturning of Roe v. Wade. It comes after the Kentucky Supreme Court issued a ruling that takes away health care providers' ability to defend the right of their patients. In a statement released today, the group says in part, quote, numerous obstacles stand in the way of patients coming forward to participate in litigation. We remain open to hearing from patients who are in Kentucky and need to access an abortion. Those patients can pursue a challenge to the complete ban and six-week abortion ban and help restore abortion access in the Commonwealth. ACLU Kentucky says it's now looking to hear from patients who need access to abortion and could be plaintiffs in a potential lawsuit challenging the law. Two dozen people arrested in a drug roundup in Laurel County following an ongoing investigation. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office and London Police say the drug investigations resulted in charges ranging from trafficking meth and possession of it to trafficking heroin, trafficking opioids, and drug indictment warrants, along with probation violation, persistent felony offender, a federal indictment warrant, and complaint warrants. Those arrested range in age from 26 to 66 and were booked in the Laurel County Detention Center. The Laurel County Drug Interdiction Task Force continues to investigate and says more arrests are expected. Lexington has a new affordable housing option. City leaders gathering at the All Cove at Russell this morning for an official ribbon cutting ceremony. ABC 36's Jane Davenport was there and has more. I am outside of the alcove at Russell where a 202 unit affordable housing development has just become available. This development represents a $46 million investment to the area. It is located in Lexington's Winburn neighborhood. Mayor Gordon says she is glad to see the new development as affordable housing is a pressing need in our city. As of right now, the alcove is more than 26% occupied. Reporting live, I'm Jane Davenport, ABC 36, on your side. Well, the first resident moved in in March of this year. Working families who earn up to 60% of the area media income or up to $53,580 annually for a family of four qualify. You can find more information by clicking on this web story at WTVQ.com. Well, still ahead, the fishing boat sensation isn't going to take a disqualification and just sail away. Plus, people are bugging out over a cricket invasion. Everything you need to know. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, cloudy and muggy on this final day of spring. Got uh, some heavier thunderstorms rolling along the I-75 corridor. London Corbin, it's coming in from your east over the next five to ten minutes. I'll track it for you and tell you what to expect as we welcome summer tomorrow morning. Your Storm Team forecast is coming up.